Hi, this is Rich with Rich Bound Photography, Sacramento, California, and welcome to my YouTube channel, a place where we talk about all things real estate photography related. And I want to say today we're going to be doing a remake of my most watched video, and that's called The Single Best Technique in Real Estate Photography. And that's kind of really was all about let the ambient do the heavy lifting. So I'm going to go into that today and add another couple of little techniques which are going to help you make your day faster, easier. And especially for you beginners out there, it's just going to really help you understand how shooting this way can really save your time, get you a better product, and, and you know, so on and so on. So before I go into this, I just want to say thank you to Adorama for sponsoring my YouTube channel. Please use that affiliate link in the show notes. Helps me make these free, free, free videos. Imagine that, free videos. So sit back, let's go into Lightroom and get right to it. Okay, so now we're in Lightroom Classic, and for this tutorial, we're going to use Lightroom and Photoshop. So you've got to use Photoshop if you want to do layer masking of layers and do all that kind of stuff, but it's well worth learning. So if you're not using Photoshop, you I would suggest you use it. Okay, so let's start here. This is a finished image. I have pretty good windows. I have uh, shadows. I have, it's a beautiful image, I think, for a simple bedroom. But this is, should be really fast and really easy. So let's just go into the pieces of the puzzle. First, we're going to need, I'm going to start this back and reset that. First, we're going to need our ambient image, which is, lit, it's, it's using ambient, so no lighting. And it is trying to get overall luminosity or exposure for the room, which I've got. It's got nice shadows here. And we want these shadows because look at the flash image of the bedroom shot, okay? So I've got one flash pointing straight up, and I don't know the power of the flash, but I'm shooting at 1 one sixtieth at two, ISO 250. So you can use ISO 250 because I'm at my max sync speed, which is 1 sixtieth, and to get this window view, I had to lower my ISO from 500 down to 250 to get that, okay? So I've got my flash image for the bedroom, my next image is going to be the flash. I'm going to bring it, a flash, into the bathroom and put it behind this wall. And I'm just standing in the bathroom with one single flash. And what I'm doing is tethering so I can trigger my camera from my iPad in the bathroom and see the results. You could do this if you don't tether by putting on your timer and walking around to the corner and... Um, you are going to illuminate the bathroom with a flash, okay? But you can see that I need both of these shots, this one and this one, in one shot, okay? So what I'm going to do is bring all these three images, the ambient shot, the flash shot, and the bathroom flash shot, and I'm going to right-click here, and I'm going to go Edit In, Open as Layers in Photoshop. Okay, so it's just going to take a second to open, and please remember, subscribe to my YouTube channel and use that affiliate link. Again, it helps me make these free videos. So now that we're going to open up three layers into Photoshop, come on, here we go. One more. As you can see, my computer is actually running a little slow. I'm now going to highlight all three images and I'm going to go up into edit. I want to auto align, and I'm only going to do this one time for this tutorial. Auto align, and I'm going to go OK for auto, and it auto aligns all three layers, which is important. You want to have everything lined up for doing masking. So now let's just select the ambient image, and what I want to do is turn off the ambient first because I want to deal with the two flash images. So I'm turning off the ambient image there, and now I'm going to highlight the flash image, which is the flash of the bed of the bedroom. And all I'm going to do is go here and I'm going to go up into where it's normal. It says normal mode. I'm going to mask in normal mode. I want to now do a drop down and go to lighten mode. And you can see, let's do that again. One, two, oops, I'm going to normal mode. And I'm going to show you so you can really see it happen. I'm just going to bring it down to lighten mode. And if you hit lighten mode, it turns on the light. So it, it brings these two flash images, the, the light mode, because it's lighter, it will only bring in what's lighter. And it works great. And it's so fast and easy. So now I've got 
both lights on and I could actually deliver this photo the way it is, but I'm going to add in, I'm going to turn on the eyeball on my ambient image, select my ambient image, and I'm going to hit add. I want to have add a layer mask. Okay. So I'm going to hold down option. There we go. And it makes a black layer mask. Okay. That's what we want. Now I'm going to make sure all my settings are correct. I have my white selected here, which is reveal. I'm going to use my paintbrush, which I also want on zero hardness. I want my opacity at 100%. I want my flow at 20%. You can start at 10%. It might be easier for you. Now I'm just going to start painting in with my brush and I'm going to make my brush about this big. I'm going to mask in a little bit of ambient to take out that shadow on the wall, bring in a little bit of ambient here to get rid of the flashiness of the flash in the bathroom here. And I mainly want to get rid of the flashiness on camera flashiness from the um, on camera flash. So there we go. Okay. Let's just, um, let's look at this a second and let's see um, where we are. You can see that masking in the ambient really helped. It's very subtle, but I think it's worthwhile to do. Okay. So now let's bring this in back into Lightroom and I'm going to show you a little trick here. So I'm going to hold command S W and it's going to save the image. It's flattening the image, which is okay because I'm done with it. And I want to bring it back into Lightroom as a final image. And the main thing is, I just want to show you how quick and easy this is. And the next image I'm going to do is just going to be letting the ambient do the heavy lifting. Now let's open back the final image. It's a TIFF here in Lightroom. And I just now want to get rid of some of this orange. So basically I'm going to hit my adjustment brush and I'm going to take out some saturation and a little bit of blue, negative blue, which is going to take out some of this blue. So now I'm going to raise this up and I'm just going to paint out the orange here. And this is something you can do on a lot of your images. As long as you don't want that orange, if you like the warmth, it's okay. A little bit there, a little bit there, and a little bit there. There you go. I'm Now all I have to do is crop out this wall. And I think it's... Um, it's pretty good. I'm happy with the final product. And if I did this real time, it would take about one to two minutes. Okay. Now let's go into this image. Here's a final image. It's pretty big room. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use two lights. I'm going to put a light. Let's show you the flash image. The flash image is going to be a light in this room behind this wall and a light in this room, the main room, right to the left of camera. As you can see, these chairs are really hot, but I need to have light in this room here, the kitchen. I didn't want to use three lights. So let's now just highlight. And the ambient shot is, um, I'm going to do a little bit of touch up on the ambient shot. I'm going to use my, my um, eyedropper tool, white balance eyedropper. And I bet I, did it on the ceiling and it got rid of, let's look at that again. It's going to my eyedropper tool. I'm going to go up to the ceiling and it takes out some of the orange and it looks a lot better. Next thing I'm going to do is take out some of the highlights. I'm going to bring that down and actually bring down the exposure to about there. I'm making my ambient shot so I can use it in the overall image. So this ambient shot's actually pretty good, but I need it to be a lot. Look at how it's going to look in the end. I want it to be really crisp and sharp, and that's why I use lights, okay? So now let's hit the, um, the two images right here, and all this is is two images. So I'm now going to hit, go into Edit In, Open as Layers in Photoshop, and again, you just, I, you have to understand the pieces of the puzzle you need, and that comes from doing it over and over and over again. So once you start doing it, it's going to be tricky, but hopefully you'll internalize and get the concepts and go, oh, I get it. This is why we're doing what we're doing. 
Okay, but in the bottom line is remember it gets a lot faster and a lot easier. So now, once these both open up here, I I'm not going to hit auto align, but I want you to do auto align. So I'm just going to hit on the ambient shot, and I'm going to make a layer mask, and I'm again I'm going to hit down option and hit add a layer mask. And there is the flash image. And I want to bring in ambient because we need exposure here, but we didn't want to bring in a light over here. So all I'm doing now, we have the same settings, a white mask, paintbrush, opacity 100, and flow 20. Okay, let's just brush in some ambient light here. And look how fast and easy that is. Okay, and let's just look at the difference right there. It is so easy. It's like like unbelievably fast and easy. And that really is, let the ambient do the heavy lifting is really the single best technique in all of real estate photography, in my opinion. Now let's address all the other problems. Look, I've got, um, my flash has caused up in the top, my flash has caused some shadows up by the beam. So let's mask out the shadows because the ambient image doesn't have the flash shadow, okay? Let's go there and mask that again. See, it's replacing it. Here's a, a bad artificial flash, uh, uh, shadow. It's replacing it with a natural shadow. Let's go back here and bring in ambient here. Okay, let's make ambient here. Let's get rid of the flashiness of these chairs in the foreground. Add a little bit of ambient love here. Okay. And bring in ambient here to get rid of that ceiling fan shadow. And there we go. Let's look at the difference by what ambient brings in. There's no ambient and there's ambient, okay? So let's go one more time back into SW, Command SW to flatten and bring back, save and bring back the image right where it goes into in Lightroom, okay? So um, again, um, this is really, really fast and easy uh, once you get it. And it is so much, um, we're basically doing flambient or flash ambient blend. And uh, it's the technique that I use. And I think it's the best technique to use to get sharp, crisp, great images. Now let's take out, let's zoom in here. Let's go back to that adjustment brush and let's just brush out some of this warmth. All I did was take out a little bit of, of uh, saturation. There we go. Okay. And let's go out a little bit. Let's see, we can take out a little bit of the warmth there. Actually, a little, little bit of warmth on that up here. And uh, boy, that's about it. Oh, you know what? I want to take out a little bit of this blue. There we go. Okay. So I think that's just dandy. And um, I can even add my, uh, I have an adjustment brush for, uh, I mean, not adjustment brush, a preset which is my final bump. And that is right here. Look what it does. You can see it on the right. It, um, it adds a little bit of, hold on a second, sorry. I'm gonna do my flash final bump right here. Let's go back and undo it right here. Final bump, adds a little bit of crispness. You can see the uh, preset right here. That's all it is right there. Okay, so let's go on to the next image. And I think you're probably getting, getting it by now. Okay, and now here's a really good example of let the ambient do the heavy lifting. Here's my ambient shot. And I'm going to do my flash shot here. And I'm just lighting the bathroom. And this is again, this is well, this is 1 40th of a second at F8 and ISO 400. So I'm exposing for these lights up here. And I'm going to show you another trick because we're out. A light bulb is out. But we need light in this walk-in closet. Oh, no, this is actually the master bedroom. So what I'm going to do is let the ambient do the heavy lifting. Okay. There we go. I actually did a flash pop for this, which I'm going to show you. I'm going to bring all three of the three of these images into Photoshop. So you can either bring a flash. All I did was walk in this room and I triggered my, remotely triggered my camera and it, it set off the image. So I, I did that there. And uh, this is uh, the same uh, 140th of a second, but you know, your exposure might differ uh, depending on, on uh, your rooms. So let's highlight this image, this image, and this image. 
and I'm just going to go and bring it into Photoshop as layers. And I'm going to show you, and I don't even have to use this flash layer here. Okay, just let it bring in all the uh, three images. And remember, you want to auto align these layers. And I hope you're getting these concepts. If it's if it's really confusing, you know, might be my teaching, but it's just something you're just not used to. Okay, so now let's do, um, I'm going to just add in the ambient layer for this flash shot right here on top of the main bedroom. Oops, I'm sorry, I have to hold down option and make a black mask. There we go. Now let's just let the ambient do the heavy lifting. All I'm doing is brushing in the ambient shot layer right there. It's bringing color cast, but you know, we saw we could deal with that later. Okay. Now let's get rid of some of this flashiness. Now I could let do the luminosity mode, which I'm going to show you. A lot of people say, why don't I use luminosity mode? Well, I know from experience that many times luminosity mode will actually cause more problems than it's worth. Okay, I'm getting a lot of the color cast here. So now let's just see here I'm in normal mode. Let's just drop it down and go to down to the very bottom. And on three, watch the image as I go to luminosity mode. One, two, three. Well, that worked pretty good. So I'm going to keep it in luminosity mode. Okay, actually, let me see which I'm going to go up here into normal mode. Yeah, luminos luminosity mode is great, but I'm going to keep it in normal mode because I want to show you how to um, how to deal with these color casts issues. Okay, so I've got my image here. I'm pretty happy with it. Now let's go back up though. Let's now turn off the ambient layer and let's hit the flash layer in the main room. And I'm going to make it a, just do it in lighten mode. Ready? On three, I'm going, no, instead of normal, I'm going down to lighten. And look what happens in the master bedroom outside that doorway. There we go. So I'm not even going to use this now. I'm going to keep it here and I'm going to mask in the, um, I'm going to make another layer mask go backwards. I'm just basically going backwards and I'm going to mask in ambient here. Okay. And because I want to show you, you don't even need to put a flashback in there because mainly you've got to remember, um, and I'm hitting X because I want to take off some of this from the wall. Um, X is, it's basically going to be backing up. So I'm going to be erasing the, uh, the, I've got a black mask here, which is erasing the, um, it's hiding and the white mask is revealing the ambient shot. I know it might be a little complicated at the beginning, but uh, I don't want to get too compli too confused for this tutorial. So now let's hear kit command SW. And I'm going to show you also how to make that, um, that light, uh, light bulb make it uh, look like there's a, a light in there. It's not going to be quite as good but it's going to be pretty fast and easy. And I certainly could have cloned in uh, the light in that, uh, in that light bulb, where that light bulb should be. Okay, so let's go right here. And I'm going to now go back into that adjustment brush. I've got it on the same adjustment brush. So let's just go here and I'm going to make my brush this big. Let's just go here and take out some of that orange. And I can actually do it on this cabinet. I think it'll look fine. And I might do a little bit on this floor, on this carpet. It's just a little too orange for my tastes. Okay, so now I want to take out some of this orange up here from the light. And there we go. Now what I want to do is I'm going to zoom in uh, right on this light bulb. And what I want to do is make a new adjustment brush. And I want to bring up my saturation. And I want to make it orange. Okay. And I'm going to try and see if I can get it looking natural. Okay. Okay. Now let's brighten this up. And let's do that. And a little less here. And there you go. I think that looks just dandy. And one more for you. This is just going to be let the ambient do the heavy lifting. Sometimes, like right here, I'm using a flash in the main kitchen area for crispness, sharpness. 
little bit overexposed right here, so I'm going to bring this down. And I just need light back in here, so I'm just going to use my ambient shot. Let's highlight both of them. I'm going to now bring it into Photoshop as layers. And again, uh, thank you for joining my channel while I'm doing this last image. I'm going to kind of, you know, uh, to bring you... Okay, so I want you to, to auto-align the layers. And I want to now add Option and add a layer mask. And I'm just going to mask in the ambient shot. And you can see right there how quick and easy it is. So I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope it connected some of the dots and uh, you can internalize the concepts. Because shooting this way and thinking this way, especially when you're thinking about your editing and your end process as you're setting up, it makes your life so much faster, less frustrating, better, shoot smarter, shoot better, make more money, and then do things you really want to do, okay? Unless you just want to shoot real estate, okay? So thanks again to Adorama for sponsoring that channel, and be sure to use that affiliate link and so I can really get motivated to make more free videos. And we have Shooting Spaces, a real estate photography podcast, which has got some great info and great presets. All our presets and courses, my seven-hour course, is on the is on the uh, shooting spaces page and that's shootingspaces.net. Go there. I do coaching, so if you need help, contact me by sending me an email at rich at richbomb.com. And I hope I'll see you at PMRE or the the conference in Las Vegas, where I'm also putting on a workshop, um, November seventh, twenty twenty two. So listen, thank you so much again for joining me. I hope this helped you and leave a comment and subscribe. So have a great day. See you later. Bye.